what you want to the lost and they like you But do you like you? You don't have to try so hard You don't have to give it all away You just have to get up, get up, get up, get up You don't have to change a single thing You don't have to try, 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 try You don't have to try, try, try
love people like never before. Do I have a witness anywhere in yourself? Do you agree with me? I'm with you. It's been a divine weekend. But um, I want to jump straight into the Word. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to James chapter 5. James chapter 5, verse 7 through 8. Then we're going to jump to Colossians chapter 2. But, um... We're going to hit it, hit it off in James. Here we go. James chapter 5, verse 7 through 8. It says this. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit, uh, fruit of the earth, being patient about it, until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord is at hand. And then in Colossians chapter 2 verse 6, it reads this. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith. Just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. I'm going to take the next few moments to talk to you. The subject is E-S-T-E-H-B. I know, you're like, what the heck is that? Is that found in the Bible? It'll make sense a little while. By the end of this message, I'm believing that you'll never forget these six letters put together. E-S-T-E-H-B. Write it down. Let's go to God. Believe that he's going to speak to us. Let's bow our heads. Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for yesterday, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word, God, that has been planted in our hearts this weekend, God. As we leave this house, God, we leave changed. And God, I pray that right now, Holy Spirit, we invite you into our hearts. We invite you in this place. Speak what you want to speak. Change us, Lord, by the power of your spirit. We agree together in faith that it's going to be done. And everybody said, Amen, amen. Well, I talked to you a little bit about my family yesterday. And um, now I love my family. My older sister, I was talking to her earlier today. I talked to her every single morning. She lives in Louisiana along with my mom and my dad and all my brothers. And it was a really big deal the day that I had my first niece. I mean, this was a big deal. Are there any aunts in the house? Wait, can you? Proud aunts, proud aunts. By the way, I've absolutely fallen in love with Missy. I am so crazy about her. She's incredible. But my sister gave my parents the first grandkid in the family. And I, this baby is brilliant. I know. I'm, I'm a good aunt for saying that, right? Every aunt says that. But this girl is brilliant. She is so far ahead of her age. My sister's always working with her, always talking with her. And she keeps us on our toes. She is four years old now. But um, today, as I was asking God, what should I talk about? God really laid this message on my heart, and it's a message that I've really only shared with our team and our family in Miami. I wrote it for them, that I believe that this is the word that God wants to speak today as we wrap up this conference. And, you know, my niece is hilarious because the things that come out of her mouth, you never know what she's going to say. So here I am sitting on the front row today, and I'm like, I'm going to preach this message, and then I realize, I'm going to share this story, and no one knows who the heck my niece Carolina Lee is. That's her name. We love double names in the South, by the way. <laughs> Don Cherie, David D, Denny Rodney, these are just family members. And <laughs> Carolina Lee, I adore. And so I thought, you know what, just to get my point across, the story I'm about to tell you, you kind of need to meet Carolina Lee. So uh, I asked my brother this afternoon, he is a whiz on the computer, he pushed a few of his little videos together. He has a little hosting gig on the side with Carolina Lee. And so you'll meet one of my brothers, Des. And ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Carolina Lee. Roll it, guys. And welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. I do what you do. It's very good. Did you make this? Uh-huh. How did, why don't you tell everyone how you made it? I just um follow the baby. I don't know how to obey every time. It's so hard. 
Why is it hard? Because we always have to do the right thing. But let's, let's, let's talk about you. <laughs> What else do you like about me? Um, I don't like anything else. I just love it. <laughs> so, anyways, Caroline only is in the process of learning how to read. And my sister, Destiny, the other day said, Caroline only, get over here. She was sitting on the couch. She said, come over here, Mama. I want to teach you how to read. So Caroline only comes over. She grabs a book, and she walks up to her mom, and she goes, Mom, I already know how to read. <laughs> and Destiny looked back at her, just like a great mom, and said, Okay, it's great that you know how to read, Caroline Lee, but it's also important that you be teachable. And Caroline Lee looked back at her without a moment's hesitation and said, I already know that too. <laughs> There's a difference between hearing and applying. We could preach that all day, right? <laughs> the Caroline Lee pulls up in her mom's lap. She opens up the book. She says, Mom, I've got this. I can read. And she starts to read, for real. And she starts to read. And she is speaking with so much authority. And she is speaking like she knows exactly what she is reading. She's read this book so many times. She knows it by heart. The only problem is, Caroline Lee is reading from the right side of the page <laughs> to the left side of the page. And it was a convincing act until Destiny noticed, hmm, Caroline Lee, she said, let's just stop right there. She said, let's get something straight. I know you know your words. I know you know your vowels. I know you're only two years old and you know exactly what you're going to do. From the age of two, she knew all of her letters. But she said, Mama needs to establish something with you right now. For the rest of your life, we read from the left to the right. <laughs> we read from the front of the book to the back of the book. If you'll learn that, Caroline Lee, then for the rest of your life, you can go anywhere in the world. You can open up a book in any library. If you're in New York, if you're in L.A., if you're on the Internet, Whatever you're doing, if you know that, if that's established in your life, you can move forward and get beyond just knowing. But Caroline Lee, you can't read anything. You can fake it. But you can't read anything until you establish that. See, I believe today that as we leave these doors, as you get in your car, as you go back to your house and you put the key in the lock and you walk into your home, you go to work tomorrow, you go to work Monday, whatever your schedule is, I believe that God's called us to go out of these doors and change our city. I believe that God's called us to be the light of the world. I believe that God has called us to be salt and light. I believe that God has called us to bring hope to the hurting. I believe that we're called to show the love of Jesus like never before. But before any of that, before God establishes heaven on earth, and is able to magnify himself throughout this city like never before. Before any of that, God seeks to establish your heart. Before we can change our city, before our world can be changed, God seeks to establish your heart. And once he is able to establish your heart, there is no limit to what the glory of God can do in this city. There's nothing that God cannot do. Do you believe it today? I love what James says because it says establish your heart for the kingdom of the Lord is at hand. God is coming back. God is coming back. And Lisa spoke so beautifully about it today, challenging us. And I just want to dovetail in with exactly what she was talking about because, ladies, as you leave this place, God is asking you to open up your heart like never before. And as you open up your heart, and allow him to establish your heart, that's the moment you'll be able to move forward in the purpose and plan that he's destined for you. Amen? Amen. Doesn't matter if you know theology. Doesn't matter if you've been to church your whole life. Doesn't matter anything else but that your heart is fully surrendered to God. And this is a heart message. I want to put some handles on what we've received this weekend. I want to put some practical things that we can put into place 
to honor God and to see his will come to pass in our lives like never before. There's a famous quote by James Joyce. He says this, I am tomorrow or some future day what I established today. I am today what I established yesterday or some previous day. And the definition of established is simply this, to set up an organization system or a set of rules on a firm or permanent basis. Hear me, ladies. God wants you to walk out of these doors with something permanent changed in your life. He doesn't want it to be temporary, the words that you've heard. God's plan is that everything that you've received be established, not temporarily, not for a day, not for a month until you lose your joy and you throw it out the back door. God seeks to establish a permanent change in your life through divine conference. And any time an organization is established, there's three things that you have to know for it to be established. Number one, who is establishing it? Number two, where is it being established? And number three, when is it being established? And I believe when it comes to our hearts, when it comes to your heart, when it comes to my heart, we have to ask ourselves these same three questions. Who is establishing your heart today? Where is your heart being established? And when is your heart being established? We ask ourselves that first big question. Who is establishing your heart? And how many of you know today that God establishes all? God establishes all. We hear this word in the word of God. Establish is mentioned over 140 times in the Bible. This is a word we need to become familiar with. This is a word that matters. And it's mentioned so many times in the Old Testament where God is speaking to his people and he's saying, he chooses a man, whether it's Abraham. He says, Abraham, I'm going to establish my covenant with you. I've chosen you. I'm going to establish my covenant with you. How many of you are thankful, though, that in Matthew, a new covenant shows up on the scene? And Jesus came to establish personal relationship. Jesus' blood established a new life, a new future, a hope for us, a way to the Father. We've been established through the blood of Jesus Christ. We have been established. Our hearts have been established. But God makes it really clear in his word. You may have thought that, you know, your boss established your lifestyle right now. You may have thought that your great husband established your life. But God makes it really clear in his word today and forever that God establishes all. And so in Proverbs chapter 30, it says this. Who has ascended to heaven and come down? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has wrapped up the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? Surely you know. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Psalm 74, 16. Yours is the day. Yours also the night. You have established the heavenly lights in the sun. Psalms 93. Verse 26 through 28. Your throne is established from old. You are from everlasting. You see, God didn't ask the mountains where they wanted to be established. God didn't ask the ocean, hey, where do you feel comfortable with your borders being? God didn't wake up today and talk to the clouds and say, hey, clouds, like what kind of pattern are you thinking today? Let's get something cool going. Let's get a little bit of thunder. Are you okay with that? Are you comfortable with that, Cloud? <laughs> Hear me. It's really important that you understand this. The Creator doesn't ask the creation what it wants to be. Amen. The Creator creates. Amen. And the creation is formed according to the vision of the Creator. But when it comes to our heart, He gave us free will. And the only place that God will yield is when it comes to your heart. Isn't that amazing? That in all of creation, God creates. He simply creates. He decides. He is in full authority. But the only place that Almighty God, creator of the universe, yields. He won't step foot in your heart. He respects your decision. The only place your creator yields is 
the human heart. He will not establish your heart unless you open up your life to him. And we have this decision, ladies, as we leave divine, to decide that every single day we will allow God to establish our hearts. We will allow him to make his word permanent in our lives. We will allow faith to become a permanent part of our heart. We'll allow love to become a permanent part of our life. We'll allow joy to become a permanent part of our life. But hear me, God will not Step foot in your heart without your full surrender and cooperation to His Spirit. It's your decision and your decision alone. So as you go out this place, we need to understand. The Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. This isn't just talking about salvation. No, this is to you, man, who's known Jesus for 20 years. Tomorrow, Jesus is standing at the door of your heart. He's knocking because He wants to establish something new in your life. He wants to establish something fresh in your life. He has fresh revelation for you tomorrow. He has fresh peace for you tomorrow. His mercies are new every morning. It's your decision day in, day out. Will you allow him to establish your heart? Secondly, it's not just the who, but it is the where. Where are you established? In Miami over the last year, I, I shared with you guys that we've been on this crazy journey of planting a church. Absolutely no staff. It's been such a faith journey. God has done the miraculous. I could stand and tell you miracle after miracle that God's done that, that just blows my mind. One of the blessings is that we've been able to partner with the Miami Rescue Mission. Now, the Miami Rescue Mission is the largest mission in all of Miami. They serve over one million meals. Every single year. They provide housing for 360,000 nights of housing in one year to individuals within our community. They have over 7,000 volunteers every single year. They have been established since 1922. And they allowed us for the last 10 months to meet every single week in their chapel as we formed our launch team and begin to vision and trust God in planting a church. And every week as our launch team would gather together, we'd do five services in the morning with the church that we were being launched out of, and then we'd jump in the car, drive down to the rescue mission, and we'd do a 7.30 service with all the people that were heart and soul into seeing this church launch. And the first thing you see when you walk through the doors of this amazing light in our city, the Miami Rescue Mission, is this big sign. And it says... Miami Rescue Mission, E-S-T, 1922, Miami. Now, why is that important? Because before the Miami Rescue Mission was established, it was just an idea in somebody's head. It was just maybe an inspiration that maybe the guy went to a church service or a conference and he felt the nudge and the tug of the Holy Spirit going, I have a plan for you. I want you to start this mission. And maybe he toyed with it. Maybe he talked about it. But there came a day in his life where the idea turned into a permanent decision. Where they put up a sign and they said, Miami Rescue Mission established 1922 Miami. And from that moment forward, they didn't have to ask, are we going to help the hurting? They didn't have to debate whether they were going to move forward with trying to partner with organizations all over the city to bring change and hope to our community. They didn't have to wonder if their vision was to rescue the homeless, to lead them through rehabilitation. The decision had been made they had become established. Can I tell you it's the same thing for your heart? There comes a time in your life where you go, God, it's more than you just speaking to me. I'm going to allow you here and now to make a permanent change in my life. I'll never be the same. I don't need to debate. I don't need to be tossed to and fro like the waves. But God, you have established me, and I know that I'm established once and for all. 
were drawn to the Miami Rescue Mission because they have withstood every season. They made a decision. They were established. And you know you can count on them. Ladies, you are established in strength. That is where you are established. But hear me. Your commitment is your strength. Because when you commit to Jesus, you realize that it's not your strength. But when you commit to Jesus, all of a sudden, his strength becomes your strength. And you wonder, where am I established? People are telling me that I should put my roots into a really good business idea. People are telling me that I should really believe in my looks because I have the right looks or I've got the right bank account. You will never be fulfilled. You will never have peace. You will never have true joy and strength until you allow your roots to be established once and for all in the strength of Almighty God. Hallelujah. You are born to be established in strength. That's what God is destined for your life. Your commitment is your strength. Your commitment to God is your strength. This isn't a self-help talk. Don't walk away and go, oh, i got to be strong. No, 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 no. You have to surrender your heart to God. And you have to know that from the moment you decide to throw your life in His arms, you are strong. You are bold. You are courageous because everything that God has is now yours. You're a child of the King. You have the strength that it takes for this journey, ladies. Just want you to open up your heart. Hear the Holy Spirit whispering to you. You've got what it takes. You're established in strength today. The enemy. The enemy wants to tell you otherwise. Have you ever gotten in a fight with somebody who fights in circles? Come on. If you've been married, you've been in a fight with somebody who fights in circles. Because we all do it from time to time, right? We got the point that we really want to drive across. And, and he didn't hear it the first time I said it. <laughs> and so you get through it, and you think you're working through everything, when all of a sudden, the same thing that you discussed and worked through five minutes ago, they bring up again. And what do you do? You try to do the Christian thing, and you try to just talk through it again calmly. But then five minutes later... The same thing comes back up again. You're still arguing, so you raise your voice a little bit. And you start to say it again. You go around another time. Until finally, what do you do? You throw your hands up and you scream. That has already been established. <laughs> has anybody ever done that? I've already established that. Why are you still talking about it? Can we move on? Some of you need to say that to the enemy when he tries to pull up the past on you. You need to look back at the enemy and you need to say, oh no, that's already been established. When he comes against you and he reminds you of your past, you need to look back at him and you need to say, oh no, 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 no. The old things have passed away. Behold, I am new. I've already been established. When the enemy tries to come with you with fear, you need to look back at the enemy and you need to say, perfect love cast out all fear. It's already been established. When the enemy looks at you and he tries to remind you of your past and what you've done and all your failures, you need to say, forgetting what is behind, straining towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And when the enemy tries to tell you that you're weak, that you don't have what it takes, that yeah, the people around you in church, they got what it takes, but they don't know your story. The enemy comes against you. You look back at the enemy, and you look at him like you're in the boxing ring. I don't know about you, but there's nothing more thrilling than looking at the enemy and telling him to go to hell, because that's exactly where he's going. You say, but he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore,
Has anybody left to ever gone after your family? Have you ever felt the darkness of the destruction of the enemy? You know that what the Word of God says is true, that the enemy has come to kill, to steal, and destroy. That's not just some crazy, funny thing of a cartoon that you draw in children's church. Ladies, this is serious. We're going to war. It's exactly what Lisa said this morning. We are not comfortable. The enemy doesn't have a foothold on you for one second unless you allow him to establish his lies, his defeat, his deceit in your life. But the moment you decide that God has put a weapon in your hand, God has put a sword in your hand and in your mouth and in your heart, and the moment the enemy comes to you as you walk out these doors, it is time. Her name is Dianza. 
She will say, how do you say that? How do you spell? She says, it's like lasagna, but Gianza. <laughs> <laughs> she has six kids, and let me tell you, she's a pastor's wife, and she's a pastor, and just she's my hero. But if my mom decided whether she was going to gonna go to church every Sunday morning based on how she felt... <laughs> We would not have made it to church one Sunday. I mean, there was Cheerios in the car, and there were absolute meltdowns over what we were going to wear on Sunday, and kids not wanting to get out of bed, and having bad attitudes, and behind in school, and getting in absolute knockdown, drag out fights in the parking lot of the church. But praise God, there wasn't a Sunday that my once and for all. Yeah, there might be a baby shower on Sunday. There might be a birthday. There might be a, a wedding anniversary. But how many of you know that every one of those gifts came from God? And if we're going to honor anybody for the blessings in our life, we're going to honor God Almighty who's given it all to us. We're going to find ourselves in the house, being a light, being a part of being a city on the hill. We're going to be established in God. Proverbs 16 verse 3 says, Commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be what? Established. God has a plan for us today. And lastly, it's not just the who and where, it's the when. And I want to encourage you today. Maybe you're in the toughest season of your life. Maybe you're in the best season of your life. But whatever season you're in, God seeks to establish you in every season. This is what the Word of God says. We read James earlier. I love that James calls us to establish our hearts, but it doesn't just leave us at that. It gives us real handles for our life on how, the word, how God can establish your heart in every season of life. Listen to what the Word says. It says, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another, that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Amen? Amen. We're given four seasons right there. It gives us the practical response to God to allow Him to establish His will in our hearts. Four different seasons that that they paint such a vivid picture of for all of, one, all of us in this place. You know, you may not be in all four of them, but I, I can guarantee that all of us are in one of these seasons right now. The first season is that you're suffering. The Word of God says, so prayer. We should pray. How do you want God's will to be established even in the middle of your suffering? You know, there, there are moments in our lives that we want to throw so far away from us. The painful moments, the moments that we don't think anything good can come from, God rushes to those broken pieces of your life. He's not wasting one second of your life. If you'll trust Him, if you'll keep your heart open to Him, if you'll 
allow him to establish his, his will in your life. If you'll pray, he won't waste the season of suffering. I love what Anne Graham Lott says. She says, I read God's word when I'm not suffering. And then I don't have to all of a sudden establish this habit when I'm hurting. Guys, prayer changes things. Are you suffering today? Will you reach out to God? Cece was so right last night, Pastor Cece. We go to everybody before we go to God. We're like a, a tape player. Play it over and over our problems to this friend, and we got we gotta call the next friend because it just feels good to talk to somebody about it. There's no peace like the peace running into the presence of your father. If you'll pray, God will establish your heart. He will keep you strong even in the middle of your suffering. It goes on to a second season. It says, you know, if you're joyful, so thanksgiving. Guys, the joy of the Lord is our strength. If God has blessed us, there's a response that we need to give back to God. If God has spoken to you this weekend, don't just walk out and tell everybody else about it. You talk to God. You thank Him. You worship Him with all your heart. With absolute abandon. Don't be ashamed to thank God. To pray to God. You don't have to be in the house of God. Before your feet hit the floor, it's time to praise the Lord. Every morning, every night, you, you are created to worship God. Are you in a moment of blessing? Are you in a season of blessing? There's a response to having God's will established in your life in a time of blessing, and that is to praise Almighty God. The Bible says if you're sick, call for prayer. Let me tell you, your pastors can't read your mind. I see so many people, because it's our natural inclination to run and hide when we're going through a fight, to think that we've got to cover it up, that nobody's going to care. Guys, the word of God says to call to the elders. What does it say? It's saying, reach out. Be honest about what's going on in your life. Why? Because God knows if you'll reach out, you'll be surrounded with your brothers and sisters in Christ. You won't feel alone. And as you walk together and do this thing together, you will have the strength that you need to move forward. God wants to establish you even in a time of sickness. Don't buy the lie of the enemy. That you're better off alone, that nobody cares. No. They actually put the ball on our court. They actually make it our responsibility to reach out. Some of you today, you need to reach out and be honest with your leaders. You need to be honest about what you're going through, your pain. God never intended for you to do this thing alone. God wants to establish His will in your life, even in a time of sickness, so that you can be prayed for, so that you can have faith spoken to your situation. So that you can have people surround you. Like the family that God's created. And lastly. That last season is a season that we can all act like we've never been through. But we all have. And that's a season of sin. And there are people in this room that God's done a work in your life. But the only way that God's work and His word is truly going to take a permanent place in your life. Is if you decide today. To confess your sin, the thing that you've been hiding, the thing that you've been struggling with, trying to deal with it on your own. The Bible says, confess your sin one to another. Be prayed for. The prayers of a righteous woman availeth much. And if you'll be honest and you'll let the light invade the dark place of your life, let me tell you, you may let God establish all of this part of your heart, then you got this other corner over here. You're not letting the hand of God establish it. If you keep hiding that secret sin, I promise you, it will infect every part of your life. Because there's only one end game when it comes to sin, and it's not pretty, it's death. Today, some of you, for God to establish His will in your life, it's time to confess that sin. It's time to let the sunshine, the light of Jesus Christ, invade the dark. There is no darkness that can look in the light. Has it happened one time in history? When light hits the sea, the darkness has to flee. And if you'll open up all of your heart to God and you'll allow Him to establish His forgiveness in your life, 
And you know who you are because the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. You will walk out of this place and you'll never be the same. Not because of anything you did, but because you allowed God to invade your heart with His love and His forgiveness. I believe that today is the day. God's called you to be established by Him, in strength, and in every season. You know, I've lived in Miami for eight years now, and I absolutely, I love Miami. Like, it's my favorite place in the world. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. It's humid. Guys, a lot of you wouldn't, you wouldn't like it because your hair just falls in about two seconds. You can curl it 25 times. I do not care what kind of hairspray, humidity resistant you use. It's going down, baby. <laughs> but I love Miami. Caroline Lee came and visited me in Miami this summer, and I said, um, Caroline Lee, like, what? Uh, I'm so excited for you to come to Miami. She said, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to come. I'm so excited. And she got there. And I called her on the phone. She was at the hotel. And I said, oh, Caroline Lee, are you excited? She said, yes. I'm in your Annie. The trees are so tall and beautiful. And there's so many different types of palm trees. And you know, the palm trees have been established by God in tropical weather for every season. It's amazing. Did you know that palm trees, they can withstand some of the strongest wind? And they're built by God, created with the purpose of bending and not breaking. That's how God established them. God established them to withstand all the rain, the tropics. Did you know that palm trees, they're a tree that they bring fruit in every season? So it doesn't matter how crazy the tropical season is. It doesn't matter what's going on in the weather. In every season, that palm tree bears fruit. See, the palm tree has been established by God in a strength. In the tropical weather, for every season, and what would rip apart other trees, God has established the palm tree to not be destroyed, but to stand strong. God established that palm tree for that place. Hurricane Andrew came through Miami several years ago, and it destroyed our city. Oh, they have the picture up. It's crazy. This is the storm, Hurricane Angel. Listen to me today. $25 billion in damage. 160 mile per hour winds. And our whole city was ripped apart. In fact, our church was destroyed. We had to get a new building after that. The whole city looked like a wrecking ball went through. And yet, when the rain subsided and the wind ceased, you could see palm trees all along the interstate. They may have lost a few leaves in the rain and wind. They may have had some bark chipped off of them. But can I tell you that they stood strong? They stood tall. This may be a picture of your life today. You may be in the storm of your life. The wind may be raging. The storm may be stronger than you ever imagined. But ladies, can I speak straight to your heart today? You may be bent over trying to withstand the storm. But as you bend, if you'll find yourself on your knees before Almighty God, God will give you the strength from within. And you won't break. You won't crumble. You won't die. But God will establish His plan in your life. The palm tree established in the right place to withstand every season. You have been established by God in strength to stand strong and stand tall in every season. Amen? Amen. And if you don't believe me, if you think it's just a, a pretty palm tree, we're about to close. Psalm 92, 12 says this. The righteous flourish like a palm tree. They grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Jeremiah 17, 8 says, They will be like a tree planted by the water. 
that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought, and it never fails to bear fruit. Proverbs 12, 3 says this, No one is established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous will never be moved. Let me tell you, you've been established by God in the spring. Do you know that today? For this season, for the next season, for this year, for next year, God wants to establish your heart. You say, Dr. Tree, what does ESTDHB stand for? It stands for you have been established every heartbeat. Every heartbeat that God flows through you is another stepping stone to his divine destiny. Every heartbeat that you yield your life to the Holy Spirit, there is no limit to what God can do. All you have to do is yield your heart to him. You walk it over your life. There's not a starting and an ending point, but no. Every heartbeat you've been established by God in strength. For every season. Amen? Amen? All over this place. Will you stand your feet? Will you shut yourselves away with God? With every head bowed. Every eye closed. I believe that God is speaking to us today. That we take what God has divinely placed in our hearts this weekend. We allow Him to make it permanent. But we wouldn't be tossed 